In accordance with the provisions of the Open Public Meeting Act, NJSA 10 4-6 PL 1975, C 231, S1 amended 2006, C 70, as to the Asbury Park Board of Education has provided adequate notice of this meeting by sending a notice of the time, date, location, and to the extent known, the agenda of this meeting to the Asbury Park Press, the new coaster, on January 8th, 2021, via email. Copies of this notice have also been placed at the Administration Building Bulletin Board, District Schools, Asbury Park Municipal Building, Asbury Park Police Department, and filed with the City Clerk on January 8, 2021. The Asbury Park School District will provide all students with a comprehensive and progressive education where everyone possesses the skill and character to succeed in a diverse, evolving global society. Roll call, please, Mr. Hastings. Ms. Alvarez Anderson. Here. Ms. Breach. Here. Ms. Cook. Here. Mr. Grillo. Mr. Ladaraka. Here. Mr. Remy. Here. Mr. Saunders. Ms. Lazinski. Here. Ms. Etienne. Please stand for the flag. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, tonight before we start the community, um, the committee reports, um, we have a short presentation at school. Um, if you could please come to the mic. Madam President, can you hear me? Speak okay. Up. okay. Uh, <clears throat> Madam President and distinguished members of the board, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak for you, to you today. My name is Vijay Saradi. I'm the founder of a technology company based in Monmouth County. We built a sophisticated and a very useful software called At School, geared towards helping schools manage the mental health of students and staff. I'm here today to offer the software free of cost to you and any of the Monmouth County schools for two years. Uh, I'll briefly talk about myself. I'm an immigrant. I came to this country, great country about 31 years ago as a student. In my first job, I made for about $4.75 per hour. Uh, this country was very generous to me. Later on, I was fortunate enough to work for many prestigious companies. Until 2019, I was the chief technology officer, head of data sciences department for the largest municipal healthcare organization in, in US. Even with my age and experience, I used to find life stresses hard to handle. I could see firsthand the kind of stress that children go through trying to cope with school, friends, exams, etc. According to New Jersey Department of Health, 5.9% uh, of uh, New Jersey students have uh, suicidal ideation. Suicide is the third leading cause of death among teenagers in New Jersey. Schools and counselors often do an amazing job considering the operational challenges that, that they face. Despite their best efforts, sometimes students fall through the, these cracks. For example, due to high student to counselor ratios, it is hard for them to identify a struggling student before a case becomes a crisis. The system we built is called At School. It is designed to solve that particular problem. At School is an early warning system. It empowers counselors to proactively manage student mental health at scale. With early identification and intervention, schools can reduce the dropout rates, prevent self-harm, and improve student well-being. It has many cap capabilities, such as risk signal analysis, industry standard mental health screenings, case management, anonymous reporting, referrals, social emotional learning, and coping skills. Uh, this is what we are offering you. Use of the software for two years. At the end of that period, we may offer you additional years for free, or you could purchase the software, or you can simply cancel it. You own your data. 
we do not advertise or sell your data. Data will be wiped clean at the end of the period. Uh, the software has an opt-out functionality. That means uh, if a counselor and principal approves, a student or a uh, student or parent, they can simply opt out of the system, right? So uh, they'll be completely out, and their data will be purged. So uh, in return, what we'll be looking from you is put in a good word among your colleagues, share your experience, you, uh, you know, how you like the software whenever you can. That's all. Thank you. Are there any questions? I have, I have a question. Um, you said it's free for two years. You're offering it to us, and then what would the cost be after those two years? Uh, Ma'am, uh, is it okay if I follow up, with, uh, if I get back to you with an answer? Because uh, that particular information is our uh, intellectual property. Since we, my hope is to give you the software for free in perpetuity. We say two years simply because, you know, I don't want to get you know, promise you anything more than that. But I will give you in writing exactly what we charge other people. Do you have written materials? Yeah. As, as well that can be provided to the board? Yes, sir. We will provide that data to you, yeah. Anything else? Are there any additional questions or comments? OK, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, at this time, we're going to have the um, Committee reports. Um, Mr. Lotterbacher. Thank you. The Finance Committee met. Uh, first agenda item, we're starting to work on the 2022 budget. Um, typically, uh, we'll be freezing the budget at the end of December. Uh, and staff been advised to get all the requisitions for materials in prior to that date. Uh, although grant accounts will remain open, but then we can see where we are with uh, with regard to uh, all those accounts frozen. Uh, the committee did ask, we'd, we'd like to see a status of, in light of what's occurred so far this year, any uh, resignations and retirements and then potential savings, whether the position has been replaced or if it's not been replaced, what do we have as, as a starting point there as we move into more in-depth uh, analysis over the next few months. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, a budget cut of, in 2022 based on the S2 bill of about 6.6 6 million. I was going to say 7. 6.6 6 million. Um, we'll, we will also then come back and um, uh, I'll, I'll give you some information on where Asbury Park is in terms of the percentage we are paying toward our, our state uh, required amount, our local fair share, and therefore we'll have those discussions about what, uh, what we'll do to increase our contribution to get closer to what every other uh, county in Monmouth County is paying in terms of a percentage toward their fair share. Uh, the second point with regard to substitutes, uh, the administration did look at a survey, what's being paid, they're recommending. Uh, we increase substitute pay to $105 per day. Uh, the committee agreed with that. Uh, I, now that I think about it, I'm not sure if I saw that on the agenda tonight or Jeff? No, we're waiting on a contract from Kelly to make the adjustment so that the uh, right numbers are reflected. Okay, so we will be, we will be requesting that from you uh, at a later date. With regard to uh, architectural services, uh, we received submissions from uh, four architectural firms, Dakara Rubino, PS&S, uh, I always say Spiesel or Spot Spiesel and SSP and their hourly rates were all consistent uh, $175 an hour, 180 170 and 165 respectively. Uh, a subcommittee including uh, Chair of Building and Grounds, myself as Chair of Finance uh, and the Vice President of the board 
uh, interviewed SSP, our current architect, and, and the president, yes, was there. Uh, and we've conducted those uh, interviews and uh, made a determination of, of what we will recommend in executive session. And is that counselor what we? Yeah, to the extent that there's going to be additional discussion, yes, it would be appropriate for executive session under the contracts and legal advice uh, exceptions to the Open Public Meetings Act. Thank you. Uh, very good news with regard to uh, uh, Solar, Bradley, Thurgood, Marshall, Dr. Martin Luther King, Upper Elementary, all completion and installation of solar panels, and they've been connected to the JCPNL grid. So we'd like to commend the administration as well as Solar Landscape, our uh, our contractor for getting that done in an extremely uh, timely fashion. We're waiting for final electrical inspection and we still have the high school to complete and that should be done uh, by the end of this month. Uh, the only other discussion was again there, there's been some uh, disparity among administrative assistant positions so whether they were confidential or non-confidential administration has done that review and uh, the the committee is going to be recommending that uh, uh, a few positions then be identified uh, formally as confidential as they are consistent with other positions that already are uh, formally identified uh, as confidential positions so we support uh, that move and that's something else and that will be further discussed and then recommended and that's it thank you thank you mr lauderocker are there any questions or comments uh, mr remy can you do buildings and grounds all right uh, so buildings and grounds met um, currently there are no um, facility use requests um, as Mr. Lataraka said, with the solar um, landscape, uh, Bradley, Thurgood, Marshall, Dr. Martin Luther King Elementary um, have all completed installation of all panels and have been connected to JCPNL grid and the high school waiting um, around the week of November 29th. Uh, we also discussed the architectural services. Um, we did meet with um, two architectural firms uh, Tuesday. And like we said, we're gonna go into executive discussion and discuss which ones we're gonna pick. Also, um, Asbury Park High School Stadium repairs. Administration had received additional quotes for cement repairs at the stadium. The initial quote for repairs to five areas was approximately $95,000. Quotes for the same repairs from two additional vendors came in at 11000 and 23000 And that's all for the agenda that we had for Builders and Grounds. Thank you, Mr. Remy. Are there any questions or comments? Ms. Cook? Good evening, everyone. There are no new agenda items for this month. Thank you, Ms. Cook. Ms. Breach? Homecoming is next Thursday. <laughs> 10 o'clock at Asbury Park High School. Hope everybody can make it. Are there any comments or questions? <laughs> Mr. Remy, can you turn off your mic? Um, would you like to? Um, there, isn't, there isn't any, this is a second, re I think it's a second reading, right, Jeff, on the policy? Yeah, it's the second reading from Alert 225 yeah. that was provided by Strauss Esme. And again, those were changes that were mandatory based on uh, executive orders from the governor or legislative changes. Uh, and the committee also continued a discussion on uh, technology devices and the one-to-one -one initiative and how we handle lost or damaged uh, Chromebooks and, and, and that issue. Thank you, Mr. Hastings. That concludes our committee reports. At this time, we're gonna open the, um, the mic and the floor up to public participation. Please come to the mic, state your full name and your current address. You have three minutes.
Good evening, uh, Tracy Rogers, Sewell Avenue. Uh, first, I want to thank Dominic. Uh, that was a great report. Uh, when we ask him about things being addressed and certain things, the teacher uh, substitute and uh, the buildings, the buildings and uh, grounds. <coughs> I'm sorry, the uh, the uh, engineering reports. So this is the type of response we have to get more more efficiently. I know there's going to be a lot of things on the table. We can't use the uh, ideal that we've been in the past so long. We got to get. We have to expedite these things for these kids. <sighs> I, you know, we we we've all had a last a, a, a bad week, to say the least, with with our school brand. And what I want people to realize is that we have to be people that are going to come together to fix solutions in this community. Everything we do has to be around what is best for this community, what is best for these kids. And it's until we realize that we're adults. And, you know, I come up here, I go to the city council, you know, people, people may not like me, but I've never asked anybody for a dime. I do this because I love this community. I'm invested in this community and I want the best out of this community. And what we want to see is that same thing. When we're looking at issues that come up, we have to turn around and reflect who we are. This is Blue Bishop. Let's realize what we're going to be. We're going to have incidents and we're going to have tragedy. Our name is all over the state. But we are here to educate these kids, give them the opportunity, and there are community people here that want to be invested, and we have to reach out to them and let them know we need their help. So the continual effect of how we get there is to look at making sure we're working together. And that means we all have to put our egos aside, leave them at the door, and get this work done. I'm the first person and I do it. I, I went to that city council for five years. We got, we got uh, a rent, <coughs> uh, affordable housing. We have a rent control bill and everybody come out because they're amending it this Tuesday to talk about even doing more. I push and I push hard for everything that's right for this community. And I expect each and every one of anybody in this room, and if you don't want to do that, then you can leave. But I'm going to give you the opportunity to do it and not be chastised for speaking out. So I want to thank everybody. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Good evening. My name is Mrs. LaShawn Anderson Bray. I live in Asbury. Once again, I'm here about my daughter, Johnny Jabray. Um, I spoke to Ms. Baumgartner. She's not very open to speak to me. I've been asking for the beginning about John Asia's pictures. No one told me about that. The same way you all speak about sports is the same way I feel about milestones in my daughter's life. Like pictures mean a lot to me because they're milestones of her education. Sports she's not in. Then the teachers, they're not speaking. They're asking how long she's on home instruction. You all had the paperwork and everything since the beginning. She's on home instruction due to health. It's not like she's just on home instruction. I went to the back to school. I was horrified, mortified of the things that they were talking about that these kids are doing in school. And then you have seventh through 12th grade in there. I don't know what you're feeding the kids. You talk about behavioral problems. What you're feeding the kids, they're probably angry. They're hungry. Then you talk about you want the children to be successful, but how can you be successful if you can't survive? They're not surviving. I think back all the time when I went to school as to now when my daughter's in school, we had less funding, but we had more, and it was educated. I get so sick and tired of my daughter coming home every year to tell me she's out of school because Christopher Columbus discovered America. Like, what history are we teaching these children? We go back to Martin Luther King, but we just stomp all over that dream. What about what's going on today? These children's history, what they need to know. They don't even know how to fill out applications, but you have career days. They're having kids, they're doing all this stuff. What is the school really implementing? Then you have security here, you have all this going on, but 
School, public school is free for the children, but at the expense of the children. Because really, what are they successful in? If they get a scholarship for a sport or something, then they come back here and then what happens? Somebody in their family gets murdered or something, then they have retaliation, then bam, there goes their scholarship. Was it worth it? I mean, are we really, are the children really succeeding? Do you feel like they're succeeding? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bray. Good evening. Um, Madam President, uh, <clears throat> I would like to take this time to say thank you for your service, you uh, and the entire board who, who's here for the kids of this community. Um, Mrs. Anderson, I know you two guys are leaving the board, so I want to congratulate Mr. Saunders, Ms. Cook, and also Mrs. Ricks on your being chosen winning the last election. Um, I'm here today because I want to talk to you guys about a follow-up from the last time I was here. We spoke about, I spoke about um, a process that I was involved in with the school in reference to a coaching position, as you all know. Um, I think that there was some bias towards me in reference to that um, appointment. And again, I just, I wanted to go through the process to find out exactly what happened. So with that being said, uh, Mr. Hastings, I have something that I would like to give to you, if I may. What those are, uh, Madam President, they are ethics charges that I am presenting against a couple of your board members uh, for, I think, their unnecessary involvement and in, um, some things that they said. Um, so at this point, um, I submitted paperwork to the school board ethics committee. Um, so I guess you guys will be hearing something in the very near future. And as board members, I think if you err on the side of making decisions based on what's best for the children, I think you'll never get involved in ethics charges or other things that community members will come to you in reference to negative behavior. You all, you all do a tremendous job volunteering your time, being a part of this community. But I think sometimes we forget that we're a part of the community because you sit there and people from the community come and they speak at this microphone and very rarely, very rarely do they receive a response. I think sometimes somebody should at least acknowledge them, say something, respond to them because people are hurting. People feel the need to come here and speak to you. People oftentimes talk about the lack of community support. Well, when they come here and they address you and nobody responds to them, what do they say? What do they think when they leave? So, I mean, I know you can't commit and put yourselves in an awkward situation, but say something. Say enough to them um, to let them know that you are interested, that you are concerned, that you are going to take what they say seriously. My time. So, thank you guys very much. Um, good luck to you guys. Good luck to the, the new appointments that will be coming in in the new year. And good luck to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Eric Schneider, 658 Denise Court, Brick, New Jersey. Good evening. I am currently employed at the Asbury Park High School as an eighth grade teacher. I'm also coaching wrestling for the middle school. Due to recent events in the athletic department, the coaching assignments were altered, and now each of us is coaching without an assistant. Wrestling is a contact sport, and the chance of injury is high. In the unfortunate case of an injury that requires a hospital visit, one coach needs to accompany the student athlete while the other remains with the rest of the team. Additionally, 
with a growing program, supervision at matches and practices will be difficult for one person to do. We have brought these concerns to the athletic department and we're told that no further hiring will be done at this time. If we are all here for the children and their best interests, why would we not take every step necessary to ensure their safety while they participate in athletics? Thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional comments? Do we have any phone calls or emails? We have no emails at this time. Nor do we have any phone calls. Thank you. Public participation is now closed. Whereas the Open Public Meeting Act allows for the exclusion from discussion at the public, at the public portion of a meeting of certain matters as outlined below, and whereas the Asbury Park Board of Education wishes to discuss such matters made and will make such discussions public when a proper conclusion has been reached, now therefore it be resolved that on November 18, 2021, the Asbury, in, at Asbury Park, New Jersey for the purpose as outlined and described below upon return action will not be taken. And for the members of the public and the community who are here this evening, the board is going to be going into executive session to discuss confidential matters concerning personnel, uh, school security and safety, collective bargaining, contracting, potential litigation, and matters of attorney client privilege. It's anticipated that the board will be in executive session for approximately 20 to 25 minutes. I'll move it. Second. All in favor? Oh.